Okay, so conspiracy theories. Everyone loves them, right? But in relation to the NFL, there are some fun, wacky theories out there, also uh, some genuinely harmful ones. But in this video, I want to go over one specific NFL conspiracy theory that never really gets talked about, and one that I wholeheartedly 100% believe is real. So please, just hear me out. I believe the most iconic game in NFL history, the 1967 NFL championship game between the Cowboys and the Packers, better known as the Ice Bowl, was completely and utterly rigged. Yeah, I know, it sounds insane, right? And I understand it's going to take a lot of convincing, but by the end of this video, we'll uncover the real reasons that led to the most bizarre game in NFL history, and the sinister motivations of the true puppet master that orchestrated this entire set of circumstances from start to to finish. But first, we gotta set the groundwork. Uh, what exactly was the Ice Bowl? Well, on paper, the Ice Bowl was the 1967 NFL Championship game, but it was also between two of the most iconic franchises in sports in the Dallas Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers, adding another level of competitiveness. And although this is true, this game was still so much more than that. On the Packers side, after their success in the prehistoric era of the NFL, their franchise had an almost two decade long stretch of time where they won nothing at all. But things would change in 1959 when the Packers officially hired former Giants offensive coordinator Vince Lombardi to be their next head coach, hoping he could bring the Packers franchise back to being as respected as they were when Hitler was alive. And I'm not going to go into full detail here, but just know that Vince Lombardi knew what the hell he was doing, revolutionizing the Packers' schemes, their practice schedules, and more importantly, their culture, as he led the Packers to a whopping four total NFL championships in the 1960s before 1967, and won the first ever Super Bowl in the 1966 season. But going into the 1967 season, this Packers team was a walking wounded animal. Not only had they just lost the two focal points of their offense in backs Jim Taylor and Paul Horning, but this Packers team was just getting old in general, and the toll of such a strict military-like schedule was starting to really be paid in full by the players, and more noticeably by their legendary head coach in Vince Lombardi. So as the 1967 season went on, Vince Lombardi's health continued to deteriorate externally and internally, so with this likely being his last season coaching the Packers, all he wanted was one more NFL championship to complete a three-peat, as they had won championships in 65 and 66. So all he wanted was one more in 67 to ride off into the sunset with a smile on his face. And after predictably mutilating the Rams in the divisional round, the Green Bay Packers found themselves in the NFL Championship and stood there waiting to see who would come out of the other side of the tunnel. That team would be the Dallas Cowboys, and although they took a vastly different path to get here, they still share some striking and dare I say scary similarities to the Packers. Unlike the Green Bay Packers, the Dallas Cowboys at this time were a relatively new franchise, only being founded in 1960 and announced right away that their first ever head coach would be none other than the immortal Tom Landry, former defensive coordinator for the New York Giants. The offensive and defensive coordinators for the New York Giants in the 1950s both became NFL legends. And look, all I've got to say for now is they both really wanted to beat each other. Anyway, the Cowboys led by Tom Landry's ferocious doomsday defense got the Cowboys a ticket to the 1966 NFL championship game where the Cowboys came within one play from possibly beating beating none other than Vince Lombardi's Packers. So with this crushing loss in 1966, the Cowboys' revenge tour began in 67 as they steamrolled through the league, annihilating the Browns in the divisional round 52-14. to My god, and found themselves right back where they were 366 days prior. Now, here's the thing. Remember how I said this Packers team in 1967 was aging? Well, yeah, that, that was painfully true. And unfortunately for the Packers, the Cowboys were easily the most explosive fast-paced team in the league this year, with younger athletes at every single position. And although the age gap doesn't seem that huge, it was definitely going to be a massive factor. 
And in 1967, the Cowboys offense was led by five guys all under the age of 30, with quarterback Don Meredith, backs Don Perkins and Dan Reeves, receivers Bob Hayes, and flanker slash pedophile Lance Rensel. And once again, this was a team that prided themselves on tough defense and, very important to know here, speed on offense. So Vince Lombardi observed this Dallas Cowboys team, led by his old friend and rival in Tom Landry, saw the talent and lust for revenge they had, and must have realized the Packers, at the very least, needed a sort of trump card to win the 1967 NFL Championship game. Because as it stood on paper, the Cowboys were, by all definitions, just the better team. Luckily, Lombardi was an absolute control freak, and the first step to beating the Cowboys in Lombardi's master plan plan was to make 100% certain that Dallas had to come play Green Bay in their own backyard, as the importance of this was made very clear in an interview on Lombardi before the big game. We're real happy we're going to play in Green Bay, let me say that, and uh, our field is going to be in good shape uh, because unless something happens to the uh, to that electric blanket we have out there. Interesting interview there, if nothing goes wrong. Okay, okay. Well, uh, for now, let's just focus on whatever the hell that electric blanket he was talking Talking about was. Before training camp of the 1967 NFL season, Vince Lombardi had a brilliant idea. In order to make Lambeau Field playable during extreme freezing weather games, Lombardi invested at least $80,000 into a 14 mile cable system that was buried six and a half inches below the grass field, all controlled by one singular thermostat, to at least give Vince Lombardi some leverage in the ongoing fight with nature itself. And once the 1967 season began, the special electric blanket was a complete success, working perfectly on the two times it was actually turned on during regular season games, as the blanket was able to successfully warm up the field from the ground up in a late season week 10 game against the 49ers, as well as in the last game of the regular season against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So this blanket was tested thoroughly during practices and real games. So like Lombardi said, unless something went haywire with this crust carpet, everything should be going according to plan. And I guess it did, as this is where step two of Vince Lombardi's ingenious plan goes into motion. As days before the NFL championship game would take place, as all teams do, the Dallas Cowboys tried to go to Lambeau Field and practice there, to, you know, just get used to the field, weather, other conditions, and whatnot. But Lombardi was having none of that, making it very clear that the Cowboys were not going to be allowed to use the field until the day of the championship game. Because of the blanket that he had installed, the field was covered with a massive tarp to preserve heat, and for some reason, it could not be lifted under any circumstances. Now, this was an obvious violation of the NFL rulebook, which I know was different back then, but still, this doesn't take away from the fact that Lombardi was clearly doing everything he could to stall the Cowboys from practicing. So, to avoid getting in trouble with the NFL executives at the top of the food chain, Lombardi caved in and rolled the tarp all the way back to the 50-yard line and let the Cowboys practice on Lambeau Field before rolling the tarp back up. This all happened in insanely cold weather, and during this practice time that the Cowboys got, Dallas seemed pretty impressed with the field quality despite the cold, as the Cowboys seemed maybe a little too comfortable with the field, as you had Cowboys future Hall of Famer and Super Bowl MVP linebacker Chuck Howley saying, if we have another day like this, it will be ideal. Ideal, huh? Right. So although Vince Lombardi may have just lost a small battle, the man was already winning the war, as the conditions that the Cowboys would get comfortable in when they practiced on the field before the game wouldn't even be remotely close to the conditions they would have to face when the day of reckoning would come. Leading up to the game, early weather reports had begun to show that around the exact time the NFL championship game was supposed to be taking place, there would be significantly low temperatures, pretty much making football or hell going outside impossible for any warm-blooded mammal. Things got so bad that adding the weather on to the fact that the Cowboys were not happy with how the Packers were handling their practice schedules, NFL Commissioner Pete Rozelle was seriously considering a postponement of the NFL championship game. But Vince Lombardi assured the NFL offices that there was nothing to worry about, as his electric blanket would be able to keep the field warm, and as planned, the two teams would be able to duke it out once and for all. 
So finally, the day had come. The Dallas Cowboys were set to face off against the old and broken down Green Bay Packers. And as was reported, it was cold. But not just cold, but record-settingly cold. Throughout the day, the temperatures in Green Bay ranged from negative 12 degrees to negative 17 degrees Fahrenheit. So although Vince Lombardi couldn't conjure the weather, or at least I don't think he could have, he seemed to have a plan in place for this exact situation. The Cowboys players that had been used to warm conditions all year long woke up on the day of the championship and seemed lost in an arctic blast of chilling misery. But the one thing that these Dallas players could rely on at least was that Lombardi's special blanket would be able to keep conditions playable just like how they were a few days prior. <clears throat> well, come game time, with the Cowboys in the palm of Lombardi's hands relying on this blanket, with the Packers players supposedly relying on this blanket, and the entire NFL executive offices, including the goddamn commissioner relying on this blanket, it didn't work. In a very odd set of circumstances, for some reason when the blanket was needed most, just two hours before kickoff, it was reported that the blanket was no longer functioning at all, allowing the condensation in between the tarp and the grass to form a thick layer of ice rather than a pocket of warm air to thaw the field. Now this was a shock to everyone, and even Coach Lombardi, who seemed really upset that his very own special blanket shat itself in its biggest moment. But this was all part of his master plan, as nobody could know that he was the one who self-sabotaged his own blanket, and he used the fact that he was the creator of this blanket as a shield to deflect the blame onto faulty technology at the worst possible time. So right before the game began, the Cowboys still didn't even know something was wrong with the field, and NFL officials couldn't do anything about it either. So once the Cowboys took the field for the first time, everything changed for them. Remember, although it was ridiculously cold, Packers players were already at least a million times better equipped for the tundra that was in front of them than the Cowboys were. So when Dallas first realized the field was not like how it was when they practiced just a few days ago, Lombardi had successfully caught the Cowboys completely off guard and put them in a full-blown panic. And the Cowboys didn't even need to practice on the field to realize something was very wrong, as before the game even began, Dallas players watched as the band that performed during the pregame had their instruments stick to their face because of the conditions, having to tear off pieces of their own skin just to be freed of their own shackles of brass. And according to our degenerate pal Lance Rensel, as the Cowboys retreated to the locker rooms, instead of, you know, game planning for the NFL champ championship game, the Cowboys were far more concerned with staying warm on the field than actually winning the game, as while Tom Landry's crew seemed lost as his players were busy making custom mittens and shysties, meanwhile Vince Lombardi had his players calm and collected. The first thing that Lombardi said when he walked into the Packers locker room was, it's our kinda day, boys. It's our kinda day. And with a little pregame speech, Lombardi would shift the entire Packers game plan from one focusing on the pass to one that would focus on the run game, as with the given conditions, passing the ball was not really going to be an option. But, you know, with the Cowboys' main weapons being the receiving game and speed, I think this was a trade-off that Lombardi was okay with. So, with a new game plan and the motivation to three-peat, the Elders' home took the field, and on the other side, the Cowboys' players were still blinded by the new field conditions and still hadn't recovered from that flashbang yet. But the game must go on, and immediately the Green Bay Packers looked ready and played efficient football, scoring two early touchdowns in the first and second quarter to jump out to a massive 14-0 lead. Now, although the Packers had been playing well so far to this point, the cold and ice rink field by itself was also able to completely neutralize a ton of Cowboys players, but most importantly, Dallas's star receiver Bob Hayes was taken out of the entire game as he played every snap with his hands on his d never taking his hands out of his pants even when he was running routes. So safe to say Lombardi's alleged scheme was going way better than expected. 
Eventually, as the game waged on, inevitably the Cowboys got used to the cold at least a little bit, as well as the fact that their team was just more talented than Green Bay. The Cowboys climbed back into the game, and off a wild rollout running back throw and a field goal later, the Cowboys held a 17-14 lead late in the game. But at this point, the advantage the Packers held early in the game was just too much to overcome, as Lombardi deviated from his plan and trusted his Hall of Fame quarterback Bart Starr to make plays, and he did just that, conducting a 68-yard drive down the frozen wasteland, converting a third and one ballsy, game-winning touchdown with time expiring to bring home the third straight NFL championship for the Green Bay Packers. So all was perfect for Green Bay, as they would go on to win the Super Bowl against the Raiders a few weeks later, and Vince Lombardi would retire on top. But on the other side of this game, the Dallas Cowboys were not happy at all. They were convinced that if the elements were to factor, the Cowboys would have annihilated Green Bay, and the Packers were able to hide their weaknesses through the weather while the Cowboys' strengths were supposedly hidden. And you know, they just might have been right, as before the game began, there were some Cowboys players that may have uncovered the truth, as while some guys were doing their best to break the ice on the field with their cleats to make the field mildly playable, reporters captured Cowboys defensive lineman Jethro Pugh saying the words, That bastard Lombardi. He turned off his machine. And maybe he did, maybe he didn't rig the ice bowl. But if somehow Vince Lombardi was able to pull off this plot, where he destroyed his own field, broke the Cowboys mentally, while also keeping his entire team and the league executives in the dark, then, you know, I think that would just be the perfect secret to take to the grave, and a savage way to go out on top for one of, if not the greatest coaches in all of sports. So, what do you think? Maybe I convinced you that it was rigged, maybe I didn't. But if you like this video, then subscribe, because I got a lot of videos on the channel just like this one. And if you like this video, then watch this video right here, where I went over every single failed quarterback after Peyton Manning in Denver. It's pretty good, trust me. Anyways, until next time.